I've seen other quizzes where there's like 50 questions. We do have an intermission. Don't worry, we have an intermission. We have an intermission. A good intermission this time. Uh, right. What is the first round? The first round is... Who is behind the mask? I'm going to bring you up six Irish people and you have to tell me who they are behind the leprechaun mask. Yeah, we're going stereotypes, aren't we? <laughs> we are indeed. Right. This is the first one. There we go. Granted, I shouldn't have put a green background because that looks a bit stupid. <laughs> right. Here we go. Who is that behind the mask? Is it Colin Farrell, Brenton Gleeson, Brenton Grace, or Terry Wogan? Evening, Cots players. You've just joined us at the first question of the quiz. And you missed some bewitched. <laughs> There was better music than that, but um, hello there. <clears throat> I can't I can't type evening, uh, because um, if I type evening, then my quiz kit page goes away, and so does my PowerPoint page goes away. <laughs> Plenty of points tonight, anyway. Uh, the answer, I will reveal who's behind the mask. It was Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. Him off the guard. So three people got that right. The two people quick, quick, click that. That's hard for me to say, isn't it? Quick click. They saw the word Brendan and thought, oh, click it. No. Right, next one. Not Amaranth. Who is that behind the mask? Is it Maura Higgins, Vogue Williams, Ivana Lynch, or Una Healy? <laughs> Do you know who this is, Cotsplay? A pain in the arse that, well... A lot of them are, aren't they? Well, about, I'd say half of these people are peeing in the arses. Yeah, honestly, I've never heard of any of this. Right. Maura Higgins was in Love Island. And uh, then she went on Dancing on Ice. Una Healy was a member of the Saturdays. Um, she was the Irish one. Uh, Ivana Lynch is a actress. And w who this is... Is Vogue Williams, who used to be married to Brian McFadden. I think she was married to Brian McFadden. Uh, but she's now married to Spencer Matthews, that twat from Baden Chelsea. And two of you got that right. It is Vogue. And she does, like, does she do like an advert for washing up powder or something? She's married into money, shall we say. Because she's now with Spencer Matthews. And she's um, thrown out a couple of children, Spencer. So when so if if they do split up, you know, she get a bit of money out of him, and we'll all be happy about that because Spencer Matthews is a twat. Right. The next one is this. Probably easier uh, when they've got a mask on, but anyway. <laughs> Who is this? Is this Ozier, Killian Murphy, Danny O'Donoghue, or Mark McKenna? This one is quite like, is it this guy, right? Does he have the most famous eyes? 
you know, he's got the most rec. Would he? Would you think? Would do you think he's got the most recognizable eyes as as a celebrity? Because it is Tommy Shelby himself. It's Killian Murphy. Five out of five got that right. <clears throat> Well done. Very striking eyes, doesn't they? Very striking eyes. These aren't striking. <laughs> Who is it? Is it Adele Lynch? Edel Lynch? Becky Lynch? Or Kiwi Lynch. Being a bugger on the fourth question. Um, the next two aren't too bad. This one is a bit of a bad one. I fully expect this one might be a zero. Bet Lynch, yeah. Uh Well, three, three of them do exist. They are uh, one of the twins from uh, Bewitched. Doesn't really matter even if I shoot the face, but anyway. It is Kiwi Lynch and Zero got that right. Uh, Becky Lynch is an Irish wrestler. Um, Edel Lynch was the other Bewitched twin. I think she's a twin. She's definitely a twin, isn't she? Pretty sure they are. Were they twins? Something tells me they were. Bert Lynch, you pick for people who remember Zed cars. Yeah, Becky Lynch is, is the current women's champion in WWE. <laughs> uh, real name, Rebecca Knox. Didn't think Knox was Irish enough for her, I think. Whenever they first had her coming out, she used to do the, the river dance. Dressed in green, because that's what Americans think Irish people are. Um, Number five. <laughs> Killian Murphy was striking. This one is more scared shitless. Who is it? Is it Craig Parkinson, Ewan Rean, Robert Sheehan, or Nathan Stewart Jarrett? <clears throat> Don't know why I put one glove on me. I bought these gloves on Amazon, right? And I've realised that uh, these are just normal gloves and somebody has just cut them really badly with a pair of scissors because he's, he's afraid at the edges. <laughs> Who was it? Ooh, it was uh, Robert Sheehan. And four of you got that right. Yeah, I stopped watching Misfits whenever he left it because it got went shit. And the last one in this round. I heard there's more Irish and American in Ireland. Can that be true? Probably. Um, more than likely because of the immigration and all that there. Um... Because this is the thing. What 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 does um, the Northern Ireland ministers do whenever uh, they want to celebrate St Patrick's Day? They fly to America to see Joe Biden. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Mmm, coffee. I forgot to change that. <laughs> morning, Dan. Morning, evening, Dan. What the fuck? I actually got up kind of early today. It was it was my day off because you get St Patrick's Day off here. Um, this is, uh, oh shit, 
I didn't even. Oh, that's it. That, that was a bit. I've already shown who it is. Balls, right? Who is it? Hopefully, hopefully you you didn't see that. Uh, is it not? Not that it matters anyway. Jesse Buckley, Ashley Loftus, Catherine Kelly, or Ashley B. Um, hello, Dan, and is and is drinking a drink. <laughs> You, you you sounded all right on uh, about my thumb last night. I know. Seeing her face didn't <laughs> didn't give you any clues, right? Didn't help. Yeah. Uh, probably because this is the hardest one. Um, the answer. I can reveal the face now. I know. It was Jesse Buckley. Uh. He had a film out called, um, oh God, what was it called? Called Wild, Wild Rose? Something. He sang songs in the movie. Was it called what? Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Called Wild Rose? Lost Star as well. But our, our most famous one. The one that she sings in, and I think Julie Walters is in it as well. Um, yeah, Wild Rose. Right, that's the end of that round. Yeah. Let's look at the scores, shall we? And the scores tell us that Ionic Arm is in the lead with 113,961. Rima Blacka is in second uh, with 69. Nice. 201. Cotsplays is in third with 50,681. Lisbon is in fourth with 542. And Nuka is in fifth with minus 25,416. I am whispering a bit because there's a wake next one. I don't want to shout too much. <laughs> that's that's why that's that's why I'm doing a bit of Bob ASMR. The next round is called Some Character. So these are all uh Pictures of characters from television, films, TV, and movies. That's the same thing, isn't it? Films and movies are the same thing. Right, films and TV. Uh, you have to tell me what was the character they played. Not the real person's name, just the character they played. The first one is going to be an easy 25,000 points for you. Being nice to you. Here we go. There we go. Name this character from Father Ted. Is it Mrs. Doyle, Mrs. Costa Curta, Mrs. Maldini, or Mrs. Baggio? I'm not going to be easy for the rest of them. Because <laughs> I'm a little shit. Cup of tea, Father? Um, you know what I did today, being a stupid idiot. Uh, I bought six uh, Coke Zeros, and um, on a Tesco meal deal. And um, the problem is, they're those ones with the, you know, cork on them. It's not really cork. Sorry, a screw. You know, cork. Ah, it is a cork. Yeah, cork on them. I don't have a cork screw. I can't feckin' open them. <laughs> this is Doyle. Why have you got that right? I was trying to wedge the Coke open with a knife and it wouldn't open for me. Because <laughs> I don't have a corkscrew. Because I don't drink. So I don't need a corkscrew. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to find things I could use to, to prise the, the cork off the top. Coke with a cork. Yeah. They're called a cork, isn't it? Because it's called a cork with a cork screw, isn't it? Anyway. Next one. Name this character from The Commitments. Is it Mickey Rabbit, Jimmy Rabbit, JP Rabbit, or Roddy Rabbit? I don't know, I'll show you, I'll show you.
It is a it is but you would say it's a it's a bottle top. Look, there it is. Coca Cola, two hundred and fifty bottle top and bottle opener. Leave it off with a lighter. Excuse me, waiter. This coke is corked. <laughs> Why have I went? What's happened? Mike, Mike, oh, for fuck's sake. Why have I dropped frames? I'm back again. There's a cat outside. Hold on a second. I'll give you the answer. The answer is Jimmy Rabbit. All right now. Right. Okay. Next one. Uh, it froze a bit, yeah. Must be it got up and then come down again. Right. Question number nine is this. He was buried under the patio. But can you name the character from Brookside? Was it Thomas Sweeney, Jimmy Corkle, Barry Grant or Trevor Jordash? I actually mentioned this guy on a stream before I came in here. Does, does Coke even go with lamb patty? He was a bad man, yeah. Uh, the answer is... Trevor Jordash. I tried, I tried prizing it open with my fingers, but it wouldn't work, and I, and I, I had to cut my nail. Because <laughs> my nail broke. Uh... I bought it with, um, what did I buy? I bought steak and eel pie with some uh, potato dauphinoise uh, and you got six pack of uh, th this Coke with it along with some uh, profiteroles with chocolate dipping sauce. Uh, <laughs> Name this character from the Irish drama Love Hate. Is it Fran? Edge? Elmo or Scotty. Name this character from Irish drama Love Hate. Fran, Didge, Elmo or Scotty. Bottle opener. That's what's bottle opener, not a corkscrew. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think to myself, would this could I open it with a with a with a can opener? <laughs> No, I couldn't. Uh, the answer is Nidge, of which one person got it right. He was a bad man. Another bad man. It's funny how they, they make Irish people into the bad people on TV shows, isn't it? Uh, Do you watch Channel 4 comedy dramas? A corkscrew is a screw that you use with corks. Well, I've been doing that. <laughs> yes. Those teeth could open. I'm not opening up with my bloody teeth. I'll bloody break them. Uh... <laughs> Oh, the teeth in the picture. No, that's what you meant. Uh, name this character from Channel 4 comedy Catastrophe. Is it Kitty Farry, Sharon Morris, Catherine Harris, or Nadine Doris? Well, you know what, what one it's not going to be, right? I can turn it around. I can turn it around. 
That looks that looks wrong. Oh no, you coming up, puss? Oh no. Puss. Puss. Come on. Girl, come on. Come on. Jump. Hey. Come on. Come on, jump. Alright. The answer is Sharon Morris. Because um, if you knew about this show, they both use their same uh, first names as their real names. Come on. Yeah, I have a left-handed uh, can opener. Of which it doesn't really work properly. Because <laughs> I still can't open stuff with it. The perils of being a left-hander. What is the name of this mother from BBC Three comedy, The Young Offenders? Is it Orla Murphy, Linda Walsh, Maria McSweeney, or Siobhan McSweeney? Don't know these programs. You don't know the young the young offenders is quite a good show. It actually started as a a movie, uh, from two thousand and seventeen, I think, and then uh, they made it into a half hour comedy. It's pretty decent. Kind of based on true. Well, yeah. <laughs> the the movie. Yeah, ish. <laughs> it was Maria McSweeney. And one of you got that right. That's the end of round two, by the way. And the scores at the end of that round are... Right. What? Us. What? You want the wee cat? Do you? Ah! Oh, God, dick. Yeah, how are you doing? Wallow. You want this? All right. Uh, the scores at the end of that round Ionic Arm is in the lead with 182,912. Hot's Place is in second. 164,899 and Rainbow Blackout is in third 130,347 right puss puss haven't seen her all day don't know where she's at she's like gallivant and drinking uh, it was a BB3, BBC3 stopped a few years ago and it's come back again on like channel 23 I don't I'm not sure why I don't know the point of it bringing it back Everybody watches streaming now anyway. As we go on to the next round, and the next round is music based on it, is this. Irish lyrics. I'm going to give you six songs. Song lyrics. And you have to tell me what the song is. Easy peasy. Alright. This is the thing, right? It, right, I you know the channels like they're called like they're down in the nineties. They are like uh, that's TV or something. I think it's called. And then there's another one called Forces TV, and they show old programs from the eighties and nineties. Whenever I it they come up, but whenever I try and go into them, they say that this channel does not exist. Please delete this channel. So who who actually gets to see these channels? Okay, here is the first one. Actually, should I? I should. Over there, right. I haven't slept at all in days. It's been so long since we've talked. And I've been here many times. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. Do 
these are lyrics from which the chorus song is it breathless only when i sleep what can i do or forgiven not forgotten Cat's getting a wee better. A wee bit of a pet. Cold outside, right? This is the way I normally talk to my cat. Cat. I don't know where the other one's at. Go out or she upstairs. Can't remember now. Keep moving frequencies, but the old ones stay for a bit. There's two of the same channel sometimes. Oh, God. Because of course it's TV, they like showing sort of obscure comedies from like the late 80s. Um, the answer is... What can I do to make you love me? What Robbie Williams did, uh, because he fancied uh, the lead singer, Andrea Corr, and he gave her a card and flowers, I believe, and inside the... The card, it said, what can I do to make you love me? Robbie Williams. Uh, he rejected his advances. But she's not stupid. <laughs> right. Next one. Yeah, the brother in the corner is a complete nutter. Uh, he's one of these COVID conspiracy theory guys. Ice. Your only rivers run cold. These city lights, they shine as silver and gold. Dug from the night, your eyes as black as coal. Walk on by, walk on through, walk till you run and don't look back for here I am. Uh, Robbie Williams. Robin Williams, um, I don't think he would ask An Andrea Cora, would he? <laughs> a bit old for her. A bit dead. But this was 1988, so he's still living then, I know. Um, right. These are the lyrics from which you too saw. Is it Pride in the name of love Where the streets have no name When love comes to town Or the unforgettable fire I'm pretty sure Robbie Williams had a girlfriend at that point as well. But then again, I think Robbie was dipping his, as they would say here, he was dipping his wick in anything and anyone at that point. The answer is Unforgettable Fire from U2. My favourite U2 song, I have to say. I had to pick one. It kind of feels like a, a James Bond theme nearly. Right, next one. She's all laid up in bed with a broken heart while I'm drinking Jack all alone in my local bar. And we don't know how, how we got into this mad situation. I've heard Robbie wasn't very, ever very fussy and very gregarious. Yeah. Then again, he was cooked up a lot in the late 90s. So when he probably saw Double Vision or something, he saw the cores and he thought there was, there was nine of them. Um, these are lyrics from which of the script song no good and goodbye, break even, the man who can't be moved, or for the first time. After this round, we have a, what do they call it? Interval, that's it. We have an interval.
Right, let's see what the result was for that. It was for the first time from the script. Was the script. Right, number 16 is this. Today's the day we're out to play. Lost our way, it's always the same old. Baby now, climbed the trees, swan the seven seas, raised her knees and no one's to blame. Today's the day we're out to play. <laughs> it's like teddy bear's picnic, doesn't it? Today's the day we're out to play and lost our way, it's always the same old. Baby now, climbed the trees, swan the seven seas, we grazed our knees and no one's to blame. They definitely got the rhyming dictionary out for this song. <laughs> right. These are lyrics from which Bewitched song. I had to spell Bewitched like that because if you put a star in Quizkit, it instantly thinks that you are writing a swear word. <laughs> so B star witch. They took that as a profanity and I wasn't allowed to put that on. I don't understand. Putting a star up there is a profanity, according to them. Uh, the answer to this was they are a profanity uh, Bewitched with Roller Coaster uh, the second song after Say La Vie yeah I remember being at a youth club and somebody had the Bewitched album and they had it on constantly between that and uh, Billy because we want to at that point. Why are you going to play those songs so now? Because you want to. I like, like, uh, they're laughing on, on the picture and the blonde one is going, ha, you bought this record, you silly asshole. Right, number 17. That's, uh, yeah, it was huge, wasn't it? It's been seven hours and 15 days since you took your love away. I go out every night and sleep all day since you took your love away. Since you've been gone, I can do whatever I want. Because we want to by Billy, well, well, it had a lot of airplay. And it had a lot of, um, you know, video was constantly played on MTV. and whatever. It, didn't say, it did get to number one, yes, but it didn't sell that well. It didn't sell that well because we want to. It wasn't a big seller. It got, I think it's because it was around that time. 1998 was a really bad year in terms of um, deals. It came to singles. Um, Space Dust, Jim and, Jim and Tonic, I think they called it. Um, that, I think that was one of the lowest uh, ever number one sales for a song. Um, it was beaten. I think in 2006 or so by Orson and No Tomorrow. That was the lowest number of physical sales from a, from a song. Uh, the answer is Sinead O'Connor. Oh shit. Oh, I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> I'm talking too much and I get... Doesn't matter. There's a free 25,000 points. Doesn't matter. Oh god. I'm talking too much. Doesn't matter, I'm talking too much. Got three twenty five thousand points for you. I will I will try not to get sidetracked <laughs> by facts and remember I'm doing a quiz. <laughs> you might get the next one. Bet you somebody else has probably got it wrong, I don't know. Right. Yeah, everybody got it right. 
5 out of 5. Yeah, I doubt anybody would get it wrong anyway. Yeah. Uh I'll tr I'll try and do a kneel and not look at the chat as much. <laughs> I'll just be completely oblivious to the chat. I'll do that. <laughs> and the opposite, I read it too much. Um My lover's got humor. She's the giggle at a funeral. Knows everybody's disapproval. I should have worshipped her sooner. These are lyrics from which song? Take me to church, fiesta, fairy tale of New York, or love you till the end. Got another three rounds to go. And the answer, it is Hosier with Take Me to Church. Who of you got that right? Right, let's look at the scores, shall we? That is the end of round three. Boop. And the scores are Let's Play in first. With 289,910. In second, it's Ionic Arm with 216,718. Rainbow Blackout is in third with 161,487. Uh, Fizzbin is in fourth with 69,361. And Nook Nook is in fifth with minus 39,354. Now then, as Fizzbin has said, because it's quite a lot of questions in this. Uh, quiz. I have decided uh, to scan the archives for something to play for the interval. So you can go and make a cup of tea because um, it'll take more than that. This is about five minutes. Um, as you know, we all love Terry Wogan. Um, so what fitting way to do it than to play Terry Wogan when he appeared on Never Mind the Buzzcocks. So Hopefully it's not too loud. This is the intros round with Wogan, John Hughes, and Johnny Logan. Here we go. As we go on to the next round, and it's the mystery voice quiz. I'm going to give you six voices, and you have to tell me who they are. Okay. This is uh, the first voice. Number one. Thought I was, you know, uh, but I was gathering a lot of inspirations because ah. after the three years, the yearning to be back writing music, performing was there. So it was beautiful to go into the studio. And I didn't know what the inspirations were. It could be a landscape, a person, a story I heard. So it's very exciting to go. Right. Who is that? Thought I was, you know, uh, but I was gathering a lot of inspirations because ah. after the three years, the yearning to be back writing music, performing was there. So it was beautiful to go into the studio and I didn't know what the inspirations were. It could be a landscape, a person, a story I heard. So it's very exciting to go. It actually sounds like a couple of people I used to work with. That kind of softly, softly kind of voice. Trying to lull you into saying something bad to you, but they're trying to say it in a nice way. <laughs> who was that? Um, this is who it was. Enya. It was Enya. Who I think this year is 60. 
I think. Yeah. I think she's 60 this year. Got like this real big fortress of a house in Ireland. And because um, she gets these weird stalkers and people are obsessed with her trying to get into her house. Anyway, this is the next voice. And it goes something like this. To be invited in to be part of that universe, if you like, which is intricately and crazily, magically created thing. To be trusted and to be allowed to bring something of yourself to it and make it your own. And then it becomes this big pop culture phenomenon. I only didn't go with Enya, as she said, perform yet. She never does live shows, no. Never does live shows. Who's this mystery to voice? To be invited in to be part oh, of that universe, if you like, which is intricately and crazily, magically created thing. To be trusted and to be allowed to bring something of yourself to it and make it your own. And then it becomes this big pop culture phenomenon. I should have, I should have put AJ as an answer. <laughs> Is it Colin Morgan, Aidan Gillen, Jonathan Rhys Myers, or Arlo Hanlon? I don't know if you caught the little tiny bit of music at the end for that to be a clue. Um, and he was talking about Game of Thrones and was Aidan Gillen. Hidden Gillen, right. The next one, number three, is this? Uh, honestly, I don't think I don't think we will, and I, I think the boys will give you the same answer. You know, it's it's we we ended the band, and we were happy with the way it kind of ended, and it was like a big kind of a that was our moment, that was our time in yeah. music. Um, but look, you know, you, you you can never say never. Of course, we all we all are still very good friends, so. I had to chop this interview down so much because the interview kept butting her nose in all the time and I was trying to just get the guy's voice. It was really annoying. But anyway, who was it? Uh, honestly, I don't, think, I don't think we will. And I, I think the boys will give you the same answer. You know, it's, it's we, we ended the band and we were happy with the way it kind of ended and it was like a big kind of a, that was our moment, that was our time in music. Yeah. Um, but look... You know, you, you, you can never say never, of course. We all, we all are still very good friends, so. I'll just wait until it goes down to zero and then I'll say about it. Yeah, that was um, an interview from 2013 from Westlife member. Uh, they never say never. Uh, it only took them to like 2018 and they were back together again doing songs. The answer is, it was Shane Phelan. It was Shane Phelan, the lead, the lead, the singer of Westlife. Uh, again, I worked with someone who was the number one Shane Phelan fan. Literally, would leave her husband if. If she and Phelan knocked on the door. <laughs> Number four in the mystery voice. And then I'm reading at the minute a book a fan sent me actually, which I, because I love historical fiction. I mean, from Forever Amber to The Sun and Splendor, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to stuff, and that, stuff like that. But I hadn't read Clan of the Cave Bear. Somebody sent it to me, so I brought it with me to New Zealand, and I'm halfway through, and I'm loving it. It also brought Gone with the Wind, because I love a story about a bitch. She and a fan. <laughs> Who is this? Was it Kitty McGrath, Susan Lynch, Maria Doyle Kennedy, or Angeline Bell? Let's listen to it again. And then I'm reading at the minute a book a fan sent me, actually, which because I, I love historical fiction. I mean, from Forever Amber to The Sun and Splendor, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to stuff, stuff like that. But I hadn't read Clan of the Cave Bear. 
Somebody sent it to me, so I brought it with me to New Zealand, and I am halfway through, and I am loving it. I also brought Gone with the Wind because I love a story about a bitch. Another person with piercing eyes. For it be Kitty McGrath. Um, probably most famous for being in the show Berlin, I'd say. She's in a really bad Christmas movie uh, with Roger Moore. Don't know if anybody's seen it. Really bad. Like one of those Hallmark movies. Right. This one is number, what is it? Number five. Here we go. Number five. Okay. Disclaimer. This guy was born in Ireland. He is definitely from Ireland. He just doesn't speak Ireland anymore like an Irish person anymore <laughs> and then when I did Gosford Park I, I must admit I hadn't read it before I started shooting it and I sat down the first day at the dinner table with Maggie Smith and all the cold cast I thought I didn't know what's going on <laughs> I thought my wife was Maggie Smith but it wasn't and all through the scene I was making eyes at her <laughs> and she said who are you looking at And then when I did Gosford Park, I, I must admit I hadn't read it before I started shooting it. And I sat down the first day at the dinner table with Maggie Smith and all the cold cast. I thought, I didn't know what's going on. <laughs> I thought my wife was Maggie Smith, but it wasn't. And all through the scene, I was making eyes at her. <laughs> and she said, who are you looking at? So who was that mystery voice? Was it Richard Harris, Peter O'Toole, Michael Gambon, or Oliver Reed? Yes, he is Irish. Look it up. Whenever you see the answer, look it up. If you don't believe me, look it up. <laughs> Definitely Irish. What would it be? Michael Gambon. Which four out of four got that right, so... And the last one. You trust me. <laughs> Some people don't. <laughs> Number six. I think the thing that I that I learned, which is like contrary to what almost every history book would tell you, is that she was actually a great ruler for the time that she was in Scotland. The six years or so that um that she ruled, she she was actually this really sort of savvy politician. So, who is this mystery voice? Is it Sheriff Le Kerwin, Orla Brady, Saoirse Ronan, or Emma Bolger? I think the thing that I that I learned, which is like contrary to what almost every history book would tell you is that she was actually a great ruler for the time that she was in Scotland. The six years or so that um, that she ruled, she, she was actually this really sort of savvy politician. No, right? If you were to pull me, easy, uh, about um, Irish, um, you could have got me on this one for a technicality. Because the answer is Saoirse Ronan, which four people got that right. But Saoirse Ronan was not born in Ireland. She was born in New York. Yes. <laughs> but that's a technicality because um, she was born to an Irish mother and father and they moved back to Ireland when she was two years old. That's why she's got the accent as well. So, it was Saoirse Ronan, and that is the end of the round four.
And let's look at the scores, shall we? And the scores tell us this. It tells us there's no change at the top. I think with cuts plays in number one position, but all to play for uh, once you see what's coming up. Uh, cuts plays is in first position with 322,807. Ionic Arm is in second with 268. 1,972. Rainbow Blackout is in third with 234,649. Fizzbin is in fourth with 90,726. And in fifth is Nook of the Nook with minus 37,621. Right. As we go on to the next round, the next round is called Irish Winners. Kinda going to give you some questions about the winners of Irish things. Okay. The first question is all about these people. It is the Irish rugby team. Um, there's going to be guesstimations on on everybody's part. It seems in this one probably. Uh, sport. It's not a not a big topic around these parts, but anyway, here we go. How many times outright? Ireland won the Six Nations Rugby, and that also includes the Five Nations whenever Italy wasn't in it. How many times have they won it outright, the tournament? Currently being played at the minute. How many times have they won the Six Nations Rugby, also the Five Nations, whenever Italy weren't in it? How many times did they win it? Have they won it? The answer is 14 times they have won the Six Nations Rugby, including the Five Nations. And nobody got that right. It's a big fat X. Right. <clears throat> Next one is all about Eurovision. And the question is, Ireland have won Eurovision a record seven times. What was the name of the last winner in 1996? Was it Brian Kennedy, Emer Quinn, Dustin the Turkey or Johnny Logan? Ireland have won Eurovision a record seven times, four times in the 90s. Uh, but what was the name of the last winner in 1996? Brian Kennedy, Emer Quinn, Dustin the Turkey or Johnny Logan? The answer is Emer Quinn, the voice from 1996. Brian Kennedy, uh, I think 2011 or so, he he hated, um, didn't do very well. Dustin the Turkey didn't qualify, and Johnny Logan was 1980 and 1987. Yeah, it was Emer Quinn. Right, next one. Uh, you can't get away from Ed Sheeran. What spent the most weeks at number one in the Irish chart? Was it Pharrell Williams with Happy, 
Mark McCabe with Maniac 2000, Ed Sheeran with Galway Girl, or Bill Whelan with Riverdance? What spent the most weeks at number one in the Irish chart? It was not, um, unlike the UK, it was not Everything I Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams, because it was knocked off, I think after about 10 weeks? In Ireland by I'm Too Sexy by Right Said Fred. <laughs> Don't know why I answered so confidently. I haven't a clue. This spent 18 weeks, 18 consecutive weeks at number one. And it was. It was The River Dance by Bill Whelan. Yep. 18 weeks at number one for Riverdance from Bill Whelan in 1995, right after the uh, Eurovision happened. Yes, Bill Whelan with Riverdance spent 18 weeks. I only think I only got to the top 20 in the, in the UK. I'm not even sure Galway Girl even made number one in, in, in Ireland. So. Next one. Brenda Fricker. And the question is. Brenda Fricker won Best Supporting Actress for her role in which movie? Was it My Left Foot, In the Name of the Father, The Wind That Shakes the Barley, or Home Alone 2, Lost in New York? Casualty. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't casually. By Marion Axe. It was My Left Foot from 1989. I don't even believe she was in In the Name of the Father. It wasn't Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, though, um, as the pigeon lady. Right. Number 29. It's going to be another guesstimation again for you all. Tokyo 2020, 2021. How many gold medals did Ireland win at the delayed 2020 Tokyo Olympic Summer Games? Did they win nothing? One, two or three? How many gold medals did Ireland win at the delayed 2020 Tokyo Olympic Summer Games? The what you put. The answer was two. They won two gold medals and two bronze medals at the Olympics. They won two gold. Oh, one of you got that right. Next one is about books. Books. Just bought it just now. I have been working from home two years today. Yeah, well, I didn't work from home until about May. 2020 because I was still going into work um, two days every six days or something for like two months until they gave me a, a, a home PC and then they gave me a laptop in February 2021 thankfully right next question 
this. Roddy Doyle won the 1993 Booker Prize for which of his novels? Was it The Snapper, The Van, The Commitments, or Paddy Clark Ha Ha Ha? Roddy Doyle won the 1993 Booker Prize for which of his novels? The Snapper, The Van, The Commitments, or Paddy Clark Ha Ha Ha? I have to say he was a bit of a, I wouldn't say inspiration, but the influence of my teenage years uh, because he got me into reading books. Because I like funny books, you know. Now, this is the thing, right? I loved the book of the fan. I thought the movie was crap. I was so disappointed in it because I loved the book. Didn't like the movie. Then again, I never, I never actually read the the commitments before I saw the film. Maybe that might have skewed my my view of that. Uh, the answer was Paddy Clark, ha ha ha, because if you think about it, uh, all of them were released before nineteen ninety three. Because uh, the Commitments film was 91, so I'd say that was the 80s. Um, the Snapper movie came... The Snapper movie's pretty good as well, uh, from 93. Because it has Pat Mustard in it, uh, playing another philanderer. And the last question of this round is all about socks. Socks. And the question is this. In 2011, in Shannon, County Clare, Fiona Nolan managed to squeeze on how many socks? 152, 223, 191, or 121? Fiona Nolan managed to squeeze on how many socks? This was a world record according to Guinness Book of World Records. Managed to put on these many socks. Now, before you start anything, I don't know if it was on one foot. Right? And I don't know if they were a pair of socks. It just tells me he squeezed on this many socks. So I don't know the ins and outs of it. Uh, some some sock fetishist might know this answer. Uh, but the answer was 152 socks he managed to squeeze on. Shannon, Claire and Fiona. <laughs> she was cold in bed that night, yeah. <laughs> The end of that round, round five, because I I was wrong and I thought I had wrote six questions for that round, but I actually had wrote seven. Because that's the way my mind worked. Uh, let's look at the scores, shall we? And the score is... Cots Plays is in the lead with 314,248. Ionic Arm is in second with 292,308. Blackout is in third with 267,605. Fizbin is in fourth with 113,890. And Nookanook is in minus 72,036. As we go into the last round, and the last round is where you're going to lose all your points. Because it's the round that nobody really likes. It's. The price is right. I have been scouring the internet, or mainly eBay, for items that are Irish-centric, shall we say. Um, so I have found these items. You hit this round. <laughs> Nobody likes this round. So this is uh, the first lot we have. This is on eBay. All these, all these items 
are buy it now. So there's no bids or nothing on them, right? So this is Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor is a bit of a tit, uh, but he's also a very famous uh, Ultimate Fighting Championship fighter. And uh, because he is big and famous, he's got his own Funko Pop. And he signed it for somebody. And it's now on eBay. So, there's a few of these on eBay. But I have found the cheapest, right? To be fair, I found the cheapest. Buy it. I've found the cheapest buy it now. And I haven't put it as bids or anything. This is the cheapest buy it now you can get. There's about four or five of them, right? So the cheapest buy it now for this. Here we go. How much for the signed Funko Pop of UFC fighter Conor McGregor? Is it £366.52? £566.52? £666.52? Or £466.52? Absolute, authentic, RACC, trusted seller, 210 autographs. So it's like, if you notice, what way have they taken that photograph? Because it looks like the thing's flat. It must be just the way it was. Um, a fool on their money, yeah. Then again, would it be worth anything? Really? So, what is the cheapest? Um, I believe, I think this might have been in dollars, but then it's been converted into pounds. I could be wrong, because I haven't seen the next page. Here we go. Let's reveal the answer, shall we? And it is... Yeah, it was £366.52, of which nobody went for it. But it was $479. Conor McGregor signed autograph Funko Pop PSA DNA authenticated DNA authenticated um, UFC M&A proof a proof right here we go the next one is these these are Father Ted 2.5 inch Ted Dougal, Jack and Brennan, custom figurines, handmade cake toppers. So yeah, you are um, finding uh, out if uh, they are, this is, this is without the postage and packaging by the way, right? So, here we go. How much for the four Father Ted cake toppers? Is it eleven ninety nine, thirty one ninety nine, forty four ninety nine, or ninety nine ninety nine? They're two point five inches cake toppers. I don't know, Dougal McGuire looks more like Rodney Trotter from uh, from Only Foods and Horses. Ted looks older than Jack. Nah, for a reason. I'm not quite sure what they're made out of. Definitely not like you know, must be plastic in some some way. I come up the arse. Uh, the answer is thirty one ninety nine. More than ten available. So they've got they've got more than ten available of these. Thirty one ninety nine. Right, next one. There's only five in this list, by the way. 
I think there's only five. Maybe there's no, there's actually six. Um, right. Westlife, face to face. This is a, a platinum disc presented to Louis Walsh in recognition of the double platinum album sales of face to face and platinum single sales of You Raise Me Up. Right? So that, there you go. November 2006. This was, this was presented to Louis Walsh. And uh, of course, Louis Walsh didn't fucking want it. <laughs> so Louis Walsh uh, gave it away and somebody is trying to sell it. So, Westlife Platinum Award to Louis Walsh for Face to Face Album 2006, Sony Record. All right? So, how much for the Platinum Award given to Louis Walsh for the Westlife album? Was it £514.04, £1,469.05, £1,703.22, and £2,022.03? Uh, how much for the Platinum Award to Louis Walsh for the Face to Face album from Westlife? The answer approximately one thousand four hundred and sixty nine pounds and four and five pence of which one person went for it. uh oh you didn't go for the other two uh because one thousand seven hundred and three pounds and twenty two pence is is today's date the seventeenth of the third twenty two and the other one it is two th it, the year is 2022 and it's the third month so well done for not going for those two <laughs> I don't know if you spotted that or not right next one and it's something I would quite like uh, it's this It's a plush doll of Zig from Zig and Zag. There you go. There he is. Uh, there, there's his face. There's his face there. Lovely face. Zig and Zag. Surface washable only. Double Z Enterprises 1993. Licensed by CPL. All rights reserved. Made and printed in Thailand. <laughs> so yeah. It's Zig. From Zig and Zag. Mush. Can you operate it? I don't think you can. I think it's just a doll. So. Oh. There he is. So, Zig from Zig and Zag, Big Breakfast TV show, plush, vivid imaginations. How much for the Zig plush from Zig and Zag, made in 1993? Is it $7.99, $17.99, $71.99, or $27.99? Zig from Zig and Zag, Brec Big Breakfast TV show, plush, vivid imaginations. I also bought uh, Zig and Zag, Them Girls, Them Girls as one of my one of my very first CDs I bought <laughs> for three ninety nine. Let's see what you all went for. You went for. This, to me, 
me this is a bargain. Seventeen ninety nine. Seven seventeen ninety nine Zig from Zig and Zags plush. And the pièce de la résistance. Last question. Saving the best to last, everybody. What's what's this? What's what's this? This is a lovely shirt hanging on the back of a door. Look look at the quality of that material. Lovely shirt. Right? Made in Italy. Gruffs for all. Pool Palzeri. Right? Look, look at the stitching. Look at the detail. Lovely, isn't it? Um, Because it's a shirt worn by Daniel O'Donnell. And there is a picture of Daniel wearing the shirt. Right? Because Daniel wrote a little message as well. And it says, just to let you know, this shirt did belong to me, Daniel O'Donnell. There you go. <laughs> just in case. Just in case you didn't believe him. <laughs> Here we go. Daniel O'Donnell shirt worn by the man himself on stage. Condition very good. Uh, they don't allow this to be delivered. You have to collect it uh, from from Blackburn, Lancashire. That further reduction, right? So, a worn shirt from Daniel. The shirt off your back. How much for this authentic worn shirt? 250, 500, 750, or a thousand? <laughs> How do cookies? It, it it's actually his. He's, he's selling it. <laughs> the pay the pay to fix his car. Daniel O'Donnell shirt worn by the man himself. <laughs> he owns it. <laughs> what is the answer? It was two hundred and fifty pounds. I love that. It's like it's like if you can't afford, can't afford it. You can from twelve pound per month for twenty four months. That means that's not two hundred and fifty pound though. Wonder if it's all sweaty. I'd say it hasn't been dry cleaned. Probably got like old woman's piss on it. <laughs> so this is the results. The results are in and who has won? And it is Cots Plays has won with 307,446. Ionic Arm is in second with 273,011. Rainbow Blackout in his familiar position of third with 267,605. Fizzbin is in fourth with 113,743. And Nook of the Nook is in fifth with 137,387. Minus. Right. The Knight's prizes come from 
Blankety Blank from 1985. Take it away, everybody. Travel the world with a Teach Yourself Esperanto kit, a double duvet. Weigh in on these digital scales. A lock-up set of whiskey, port and sherry decanters. The very latest compact disc player. And for our star prize tonight, a superb winter skiing holiday for two. Hey, I'm going red again. What the fuck's going on? Am, am I freezing again? I seem to be freezing again. It's saying I'm dropping frames and connecting to chat. Jesus Christ. Can I get any worse? 